Hey, welcome to Pulse for April 17th, 2024. There's a new stablecoin bill introduced in the U.S. Senate today, and we're going to look at it and see what the legislation implies. Stay tuned. <laughs> So a Twitter friend of mine today sent me a notice that Senators Cynthia Lummis and Kirsten Gillibrand have co-authored a bill that attempts to regulate stablecoins in the U.S. I spent some time this morning reading the text of this bill so you don't have to. First the content of the bill, and then we'll attempt some deeper analysis. A lot of this is what you'd expect. A large chunk defines various terms including algorithmic payment stablecoin, payment stablecoin, payment stablecoin issuer, and others related to the regulation of stablecoins. There's a significantly sized section after that, which specifies conditions under which payment stablecoins can be issued, including requirements for institutions that issue them. Certain institutions, such as depository and non-depository trust companies, are designated to issue stablecoins under specific regulatory conditions. There's also specific language that talk about customer asset protection disclosure requirements, and operational requirements. Perhaps most shockingly, the bill gives regulatory and enforcement authority to both the Federal Reserve Board and state bank supervisors. Penalties for noncompliance range from fines to criminal fraud charges. This means that if voted into law, this bill will carry serious teeth. So let's start looking at the implications of this. I'll preface everything I say here that in general, when it comes to regulations, I favor decriminalization as opposed to legalization. What's the difference between those two terms? Decriminalization are regulations and laws that say that a certain activity is not criminal. On the other hand, legalization is a term that refers to a set of stipulations or taxes that an activity can be conducted under for it to be considered legal. This bill is the latter. It prescribes a very narrow set of circumstances under which it would be legal to issue a stablecoin. Broadly, stablecoins like PYUSD and USDC seem like they'd be largely compliant with this bill. Other major stablecoin providers like Tether may have more difficulty with some of the reporting requirements, but given they've carefully defined their jurisdiction as outside the U.S., they may be able to skate by. Algorithmic stablecoin providers that look anything like what Terra Luna used to look like go straight to jail under this bill's definition, and most would argue rightly so. One of the most concerning parts of this bill is how it would almost certainly outlaw stablecoins that are not algorithmic, but keep all assets on-chain. This includes MakerDAO's DAI and many of the derivative projects. The issue lies in not just the very vague definition of algorithmic stablecoin, which could be maliciously interpreted by a bad regulator to include on-chain asset-backed stablecoins, but also the reporting requirements. Keep in mind, the Federal Reserve is one of the chief regulators named in the bill, as are other key parts of the U.S. governmental U.S. and banking cabal, which has notably not been a huge fan of crypto ever. It's very clear here that this bill intends to anoint winners in the stablecoin industry, which would eventually lead to centralization if it didn't explicitly mandate it already, which it does. The constellation of requirements can best be interpreted as a way to backdoor USDC or PYUSD as a de facto U.S. central bank digital currency. This is a short-term boon to blockchain and crypto that comes at the expense of the larger cypherpunk mission most of us came here for. That's why I'd say, as it stands, this is an unsupportable bill and should be strongly opposed. I hope this breakdown was helpful for you. If so, like, share, and subscribe. See you next time.